Hey everybody, it's Josh. It's actually my second video of the day. Uh, I might wait a day to release it because I'm probably going to see my mom again tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm at this beautiful lake. It's Lake Arthur and uh, try to get some shots of it here. I mean, it is absolutely stunning here. But this lake right around the corner there was actually in the movie Kingpin. Uh, when they were on, they were on a bridge. And it's been so long since I've seen the movie. And it's one of my favorite movies. And I, I don't remember exactly what happens on the bridge. They're like fighting or arguing about something. But it made me think about, I've done a lot of videos and I, I do a lot of uh, self-deprecation, making fun of myself. And I do that and I get a lot of comments like, oh, don't be too hard on yourself. That's just gonna, that's just going to degrade, you know, how you feel about yourself and, and just, it's going to get to you and you're gonna really start feeling that way and just start not liking yourself. I think you have to understand that I've risen above that. And I really rose above that a long time ago. Not completely until God saved me, but the thing is, you have to be able to laugh at yourself. You have to be able to laugh at this world. I mean, there, with me, there's so many damn things to laugh about. <laughs> In fact, I laugh at some of the some of the darkest things sometimes because if you don't laugh about things, you're going to just go crazy. And if you're taking yourself so serious where you can't laugh at your flaws, then you're definitely not secure enough with yourself. You don't love yourself enough. I love myself so much and not in a narcissistic way, in, a, in an unconditional way that God has shown me through Christ's teachings. I love myself that much because God loves me that much. And God is connected to me in such an intimate way now. And, you know, like my, my sister is, a, is an amazing girl, amazing woman. And so is my brother-in-law and they moved to my mom and dad's house to help them take care of my mom who was had the stroke and was paralyzed. And my mom, she, uh, you know, she had some, if you've known somebody who's had a stroke, I don't know if it's the same for a lot, but it's, it's, it's pretty similar in a lot of stroke patients. They become, the biggest pain in the ass there is. And it's, it's, it's really, it's sad if you, if you sit and think about it because my mom was paralyzed. So probably the only power she felt like she has in life is to kind of, when somebody's passing by, she's like, get me a tea, get me a cookie, get me whatever, you know, she has, she was always such an independent woman that she just probably just didn't know what to do. So she just grabbed onto control. Anything to, anything to have power in her life. I knew an elderly person uh, who would literally not, they had to wear an adult diaper because they, they were, you know, they had dementia and they literally would not change that diaper. And the caretakers kept going, you have to change that diaper. You have to change that diaper. And, you know, they would obviously do it for her a lot of times, but she wouldn't do it. And the reason most likely is is because that was the one thing she can control in her life now. She wasn't, you know, 
later stage of dementia and that's just what gave her a, a sense of power over her life. Because so many of us have to feel like we have control over our lives. But that is, that is something that God shows you that you, you don't have to be. It's like that uh, poem, Footsteps in the Sand, Footprints in the Sand, where they're walking along and, you know, uh, and all, you know, there's two sets of footprints and then all of a sudden there's just one. And they're like, God, why did you leave me during that time? I needed you so much. He was like, you don't understand. I didn't leave you. That was me carrying you. If we can't get to a place where we let God carry us in life, where we just feel free with what direction God points us in, even if it's something we feel is awful. And believe me, there's a lot of situations we do not want to be in. I don't want to be here. Well, I want to be here, here. This is beautiful. I don't want to be watching my mom and dad sick and suffering. Absolutely not. I wish they didn't have to, but there is no way around that. Pain is going to come in life. It's going to come in waves. But suffering is our choice. It's absolutely our choice. So is fear. So is anxiety. So is depression somewhat. I understand that there are sometimes chemical imbalances in you where you have to, you have no choice. You're just going to feel depression, anxiety, whatever. But as I said in my last video, for the first half to third to even longer of our lives, we are in self-discovery. And the reason why when they studied happiness by age, at the age of like the mid to late fifties, usually it just went straight up to the highest level it's ever been. And it just stayed up there above the high levels that it was when you were a teenager of happiness. The reason for that is because the self-discovery is over and now we are comfortable with ourselves. We know ourselves. We might not know God, but we, we know him somewhat because we know ourselves. We have our spirituality and however we choose to portray it or experience it, that is that is the way we have found peace in life and that God has shown us peace in life. God isn't going to make you of course of course like I said there's always going to be pain. It's just standard. There's going to be joy, there's going to be pain, there's going to be everything. But you can you can just ignore that joy too because you think Oh, well, there's going to be hard times coming. So I'm just going to, why would I be happy now? There's something bad's going to happen tomorrow. And we take ourselves so seriously. And what is the point of that? You know, comedians are often, it's, it's kind of funny because comedians, they, are often very depressed and, and emotional people when, because they experience the world. A lot of times they have mental illness because they can see the world in a different way. And that's how they build their sets and build their jokes. And people are like, oh man, that is true. Oh, that was a big old fish jumping. <laughs> but they build themselves, they build their material out of that unique experience. And that's what, you know, I was responding to a comment about mental illness and it really can be a superpower 
but it takes time. You know, I, I told my, my sister I mentioned was a caretaker. And I told her and, and my brother-in-law, Tony, I told them, look, I know things are, things are very hard and you guys have done more than, I mean, I'm so grateful for what, everything they've done for my parents. But it will make anybody crazy trying to take some care of someone who, my mom sometimes doesn't sleep and she, like I said, she needs something every time you pass. And I don't know if you've ever been around a stroke patient who's had kind of brain damage from it. It is hard. It is one of the hardest things you have to do. And a lot of caretakers just build up this, this rage and anger towards, and it's just, it just destroys them. I try to be here for them to show them, listen, this is a lesson in your life and it's going to teach you that every single beautiful moment in your life you're going to cherish after this unless you let it jade you and i think that, that my sister has really gotten to a place in her life where that that is going to be the case you know i mean there's very few things that are going to be more stressful in her life than the thing she's been dealing with for two years straight. I mean straight. You think you got it bad in life? Try putting yourselves into a, to a caretaker's shoes where it's like constant. And she works from home and she's trying to, you know, and my brother-in-law was trying to find a job for the longest time. He finally found a good one. And it's just... Uh, it just makes you crazy if you let it. Or try to put yourselves in, or even my shoes. I'm in pain all the time because my back, they damaged my nerve during the first surgery. And not only that, but my I've had suicides in my family. I've had sickness and more death in the family and now I have a mother who's paralyzed and a dad who is literally trying his best to take care of her but he is his back is going out now and it's so difficult to watch and to not be able to help that much I help the, as much as I can, and the only thing that I know to do is what God showed me to do is by lifting them up, lifting their spirits up, because they are stuck in that suffering like quicksand. And it's the, just the same as we take ourselves seriously. You know, my I was making a joke about... Uh, about uh, mom last night as she was as she's lying in the hospital. We don't know what's going to happen. I was making a joke and I don't feel bad about, I'm not making fun of her. I'm, I'm laughing at the situation because if you don't, it's going to make you insane. I love my, I had one of the best mothers you could ever ask for and, and fathers. I mean, I, I mean it. I literally thought my father was a, I still think he's a saint. I really do. He He's one of the best people I've ever met. And my mother too. My mother was the absolute best companion for that. But now they're seeing that it's so difficult because the man who would literally give anyone the shirt off his back and do anything, he used to do random people's taxes for God's sake. <laughs> He did so much for everyone, and now he's seeing that it's so hard to take care of his own wife. And guilt is, guilt is eating at him because he doesn't know if he can do it. He doesn't know if he'll ever be happy in life again, I'm sure. But I'm telling you, these things, they happen to us 
because we can find meaning in the suffering. We find lessons and we find meaning. And if we, if we take ourselves too seriously, that means that we're not comfortable with ourselves and we don't love ourselves enough and we have work to do. I recommend everyone write down every single one of your flaws and roast yourself. Just m make fun of, you know, me for, you know, I have my winter coat on all year long and God, I'm scruffy and <laughs> half the time I'm doing these videos, I'm, I'm like, oh, I just see it when, my, when it comes on. I'm like, my beard's sticking out in a weird way. And if you still are so wrapped up in if somebody can insult you and it just makes you feel bad for the rest of the day or even longer, makes you feel worse about yourself, then you're giving, you're giving society and everyone too much power over you. God gave us laughter and comedy as a tool. Just like almost everything in life. It's a tool and it can be used for destruction. I mean, you can see a, a teenage girl, especially, who is getting picked on and people are laughing about one of, some, one of their flaws or something. Maybe they have a jacked up tooth, I don't know, whatever. A cross eye, who knows? They just go down this spiral because they let everyone have power over them. And they, I've seen too many teenage girls end their lives because of that. You know, since social media, the self-harm and suicide of, of teenage girls has skyrocketed. And, and younger girls in their 20s and stuff. They're searching for meaning in Kim Kardashian and be trying to compare them to be like this, they need to be searching inward. They need to be searching for God and no, no younger person probably wants to hear that. But if you see the power of it, this is my biggest thing, to try to teach younger people how important it is because they have to make their own mistakes they have to and if they don't they're not going to understand themselves as much if they don't fail over and over you're the trial and error is needed in almost every situation unless it's unless God chooses not to be but I, I don't even know if I've ever seen where someone doesn't need to just be miserable and fail over and over and some people thrive off that failure, and those are the people who have success. But you still have to find, they know themselves probably a lot better, but they have to find their, their faith in God. And then you will have that lasting peace. You'll be able to laugh at your belly and... <laughs> Somebody was, uh, one of my friends put on line today. Uh, she's a, she's a girl and she's like, I would jump up, jump up and down for joy, but my boobs are just too big for that nonsense. And I was like, you know what? Me too, man. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, you have to laugh at yourself. Every single one of your flaws is not some horrible thing there's people that the people that you want in your life love those flaws some find them absolutely beautiful i had somebody comment on me like how handsome i was or something it wasn't i don't think they said how handsome i was but they said i was good looking or something i was like i hadn't heard that in 20 some years <laughs> And it's okay, you can, you can feel better when you get complimented. You absolutely can. That's very nice of somebody to say that. 
I mean, you might want to get your eyes checked, but uh, it's very nice of you to say that. But don't let that feed your ego because you start getting those compliments and they're like, oh, you know, you're so beautiful. And I've, I've talked to some people like this too and I've known people. You're so lovely, you're so beautiful, you're so handsome. And then your whole identity will be based on, or too much of it at least, will be based on that view that you think people think you're beautiful or There's so many variations that can go wrong with that, but feel good about it. Somebody compliments you, feel great about it. Absolutely. But don't let it go to your head. Don't let it go to your head. You're, you're, you are beautiful no matter what. Your looks have nothing to do with it. Yeah, you might have stunning looks, but if you're beautiful inside, that's forever. And being able to laugh at yourself, I think, is, you know, for me, is the sign of someone who is confident and just someone you just want to be around. Just be comfortable with yourself. God made you just the way you are for an absolute reason. And flaws and all, scars and all. Okay, everybody, I love you all. Please keep your mom in my prayers, in your prayers, in my prayers. Please keep my mom in your prayers. She is, there's no change in her right now. We're still, we're still seeing what's going on. I took, today my dad just went there because they sent her up to Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, we're closer to the Pittsburgh area and it's about an hour and a half from here. Don't ask me why they sent her to Erie because it makes no sense, but that's what they did. So we're taking shifts and uh, tomorrow I'm going to drive up there and see her again. And please just pray for guidance for everyone. Pray for guidance for yourself. That's all we need. I don't even ask you to pray for healing. Just pray for guidance for everyone because God knows exactly what is supposed to happen, and it will happen exactly the way he needs to, but we have to have guidance from him and how to react to that. If we lose someone like a, a loving a loved one, a, a family member, it can be devastating without, without God comforting you. And this is the last thing, and I, I did a long video, it's been a couple months ago, on how my grandfather visited me a few times. And every time it was a, a Canadian goose. And my dogs would freak out like every time they saw a goose or a duck. And, and they saw, every time I saw my pap, I knew he was there. My dogs would just stop and be peaceful and just watch as this goose swam back and forth. It happened four or five times in different places. My, I even showed my, even happened to my daughter. A goose came swimming from way over across a lake one time, just to us. And there was probably a couple dozen people around this lake. And that's how I knew my, my papap was there with me. My Grammy died a, a month or so ago, a couple months ago. And I was walking along the lake I saw two geese. I was like, Papa, Grammy, is that you? And this little blue, there was a little wooden fence post right behind the geese. This little blue bird just came and just landed on there. And they all just looked at me. They will tell you it's all right. They will tell you they're, they're in a better place. They really are. You People say that and you don't believe it. You don't want to hear it but they absolutely are. So don't fear death. Don't fear life. Just live it. Love it. Take it all in. You're only here for a short time. Don't be worried about that either. Just love it while you're here. Okay, guys, I love you all. 
I'll talk to you soon. I try to respond to as many comments as I can. Uh, it's going to be maybe a little rough for the next few days, but I'm going to get right back to it. God bless you all.